In order to make link work, they have to have specific language features that enable the dynamic nature of link queries. In Visual Studio 2008, both Visual Basic and C Sharp were extended to include the following features, implicitly typed local variables, object initializers, lambda expressions, extension methods, and anonymous types. And throughout this section and the next, we'll be looking at each of these as they apply to working with a very simple sample application that really has nothing to do with Link. We'll just use these features that were added because of Link. Now the sample application really consists of just a single procedure. It accepts a parameter indicating the location to search for files, and given that path, it iterates through all the files in the specified folder. It adds each file that's found to a list of file info objects. Once that list is created, the code iterates through the list and displays the results in the console window. Now, as we add more functionality, we'll add more complexity as well and more features. For example, we'll limit matching files based on some criteria that you might want to specify. Let's look at the first version of this code to see how it works without any of the new language features. Let's start by looking at the simplest version of this code, which is here, which I've called search for files one. Search path is defined here as C colon backslash windows. So let's step into that procedure. Here we are using none of the new language features for link. This one creates a new list of string, and for each file info object that we find by calling the getFiles method of the directory info class given a path, which is C colon windows, we're going to add the files name property to our list of files. Pretty straightforward. I think there's about nine of these. And when we're done, we're going to display the results by calling the display results procedure. Well, there's a lot of them actually. Let me just put a breakpoint here, run full speed, and the display results procedure is a common procedure in this project, which allows me to write output to the console window without hard coding that in each procedure. So we can determine the output in that procedure and factor it out of the demonstration code. So here we're going to display files in this path as the title, and then the collection of files here. And you'll see we found all of those files in C colon backslash and displayed them in the output window. So really nothing much happened here. Now the original sample fills a list with strings. But what if you want more information? I'm extending a little bit before we get to the language features because we'll need this later on. What if you want more information about the file? Well, you could use a custom class, which I'll call my file info. Let me look at this example. Let's step into search for files too. And in this case, we're creating a new list not of file, but of my file info. I could have made a list of file info, but that would have had a whole lot of information. I only want a few little bits of information about each file. If we go look in the Project Explorer, we'll find my file info, which has just three properties. It's got a default constructor with no code, so it doesn't do anything. We have a constructor where you can pass in the name, and we'll set the name property. And we have a toString method to display the output neatly in the console window. It returns string.format with the value formatted for us. We get the creation time to look like a normal creation time, and the file length and the name of the file displayed in the console window. So that's all our class does. There's not much there. Name, length, creation, time, properties. Here in our code, we create our new list of my file info. And for each file we found in the path, we'll create a new my file info object. Notice how we fill these values in. We take the file's name property and put it into the name property of my file. We take the length property and put it into the length property of my file. Same with creation time, then add my file to the collection of my file info objects, and then display the results, displaying 
a title, and the collection. If I run this full speed, you'll see we get formatted output for each file. Here we have the creation date and time, we have the size, and we have the name of the file, formatted to look like the dir command in a console window. The reason we have it formatted is because my file info has an override for the toString method, so when the display results method needs to display each file's info, it calls that toString override. So far, we haven't used any of the language extensions provided by Link. If you noticed, when we created the generic list of my file info, the code in the sample defines the type of that variable twice. What if you want to modify it to allow the compiler to infer the type from the instantiation on the right-hand side of the equal sign? When you're writing link and working with anonymous types, this is required. But in code like this, where we're not even using link, it can still be a useful feature. Let's take our original procedure and modify it to save a little bit of typing. I'll choose option C to introduce implicit declaration. Now here, I've declared dim i equals 25. I didn't give a type. I have written the declaration dim i as integer equals 25. This is exactly the same thing. Now up here at the top, well you can't see it because it's implied with all of my projects, I have option strict on. This is not declaring i as an object. It is an integer. And I should be able to see that. Well, all I'm seeing is the value here. But it is declared as an integer, and if I used it in code, it'd be treated as an integer, not as an object. However, I don't suggest you do that. You can. People who read your code will hate you. Just don't do it. That's less explicit instead of more explicit. In Visual Basic, doing that rarely saves typing. For example, here I have dim my files as list of my file info equals new list of my file info, but nobody writes it that way. In VB, everyone always writes dim my files one as new list of my file info. So Visual Basic, as opposed to C Sharp, always allowed you to collapse that declaration down to a single line of code. But if you wanted to use implicit type definition, it would look like this. Dim my files two equals new list of my file info. These two lines of code are just the same and therefore, in Visual Basic, it's nice to know this feature exists, but you're most likely to use it when you're using link queries and anonymous types together. But the feature does exist in Visual Basic, so if you see someone write this kind of code, don't think, oh my, they're creating an object there. It's not. The compiler infers the type for you. Let's go on with our example and try option D here. And this time, look at the third version of our search for files procedure. Here I've used implicit declaration. I could have said dim files as new list, or I could have used the equal sign. You get the same exact results either way. Now here in the loop, rather than saying for each fi as file info, I've just said for each fi. Here I am using implicit type declaration because the compiler determines that get files returns an array of file info objects, so fi has to be a file info. So there, it makes sense to use implicit definition of the variable's type. And here, I said dim my file equals new my file info. I could have said dim my file as new my file info gotten the same results, but I wanted to show off what it looks like using the new implicit type declaration feature. Either way, you get the same results, and we'll get, when we run this full speed, the exact same list of files as we did in the previous example. If you remember, the current code uses several lines of code to initialize properties of that my file info instance. That is, we write code like this, dem my file equals new my file info, and then we set each property individually. My file dot name equals fi dot name, my file dot length equals fi dot length, my file dot creation time, and you gotta type all this stuff. And then we add that new instance, my file, to our collection of files. Wouldn't it be great if there were an easier way to initialize that my file info instance? And there is. 
Now, My File Info could include a constructor that allows you to set all of its properties, but it doesn't. For example, it could have a constructor that let you set new My File Info and pass in name, length, and creation time, and then add My File to the collection, or even simpler, files.add, new My File Info, fi.name, fi.length, fi.creation time. But it doesn't have that constructor. So how are we going to simplify this code? The answer is using the new features involved with class construction provided for link to make anonymous types simpler to use. So we'll start by looking at a specific example here, which shows how we can use the new syntax provided for link, but useful when you're not even using link. So here, I'll create a new list of my file info. And for each file info object we get in our collection that we get by calling get files, we're going to dimension my file to be a new instance of my file info. But we don't have a constructor where we can pass all these things. So the way we declare this is with new my file info, use the with keyword, and then specify property name equals value, comma, property name equals value, comma, property name equals value, and then end the curly braces. So the syntax includes new class name with curly braces dot property equals value, comma, dot property equals value, and so on. And then we add that file to the collection of files. And so here, even though my file info didn't provide a constructor that includes name, length, and creation time, we're using the default constructor specifying the values of those properties when we create the instance and then adding it to the collection of files. And you'll see we get the same exact results. But let's take this a little farther. Here, my file info did include a second constructor which allows you to pass in just a name. So in this example, when we create the instance, we can pass the name to the constructor and then specify in the with block just the length and the creation time. So we'll have new my file info passing fi.name as a parameter, then with curly brace dot length equals length and dot creation time equals the creation time. And so it simplifies creating an instance of my file info. And of course, we get the same results again. We have a third version here now. This third version here does it without even creating an extra object. In this case, for each fi in the return value of calling get files, we just add to the files collection a new instance of my file info passing fi.name in the constructor and specifying length and creation time in curly braces so we can set them at the time we create the object, add them to the collection, and move on. So we've simplified the code even farther without creating a temporary extra object here, just by adding the new my file info directly to the collection. And of course, we get the same exact results 